Welcome to another week of Forecast Lab. I will let you know this is going to be kind of a short one as I have uh, some training commitments this evening. So let's head right to the weather and check out the current surface map. Well, we've got an active weather system in the central plains. You can see it right there, big frontal system centered in Kansas. And we've got a very strong front trailing through the southern plains all the way through Lubbock and down to the El Paso area. Out ahead of that, the dry line has pushed pretty far east, and this is kind of an unusual pattern for this time of year. Typically, when the dry line comes out this far east, that's something we tend to see in April and May. This is pretty late in the season for that. But then again, we are dealing with a lot of cold air coming in from the north this spring. That's been kind of a hallmark of this season. Out to the east, we can see a lot of tropical air flowing all the way up to Pennsylvania and Ohio, and some, some unseasonably hot temperatures in Michigan. We've got 91 there. That looks like uh, somewhere around Benton Harbor, south of Grand Rapids. And uh, let's see, we've also got 88 there at Toronto and 90 west of Binghamton, New York. Yeah, it's some pretty hot weather there. And out west, very cool weather. So we're going to expect to see troughing on the west coast and ridging on the east coast. So what do we find? Here's the 250 millibar analysis. This is up about 34,000 feet from tropicaltidbits.com. All right, so we do have that ridge for sure out east. There it is. In fact, let me draw the axis. Looks like it goes from about Atlanta, Asheville, all the way up through Michigan and Ontario. Out east, we don't really find that trough. I kind of expected to see a large, broad trough in that area. What we actually have is kind of a ridge. Okay, see, that's useful information. When you, the analysis doesn't really match your expectations, that's actually very valuable data. So in this case, we can take that and assume that maybe there's some warm air in the mid-levels, maybe helping to bring those heights up. Now, we do find the cold air for sure, the troughing. We do find that on the high plains and along the front range. So there is troughing there, and that's probably going to represent the core of some of the coldest air. So I think we should take a look at uh, some of the soundings here and just kind of see what's going on exactly. All right, so yeah, this is showing the intense cold air advection on the high plains right there. I'm going to put a forecast sounding over Denver. That should be right in that trough. And we would expect to find steep lapse rates and very cold air aloft. And it looks like most of that's concentrated in the, in the mid-levels. There's still some warm air aloft, and I think we're probably catching some layers of cirrus up there. Maybe a bit of the wraparound. Let's go all the way out west towards Oregon. That's where we thought the trough would be, and there were some steep lapse rates in the low levels. However, the air aloft is not particularly cold. Let's see 500 millibar temperatures here, running about minus 17. That's not really that cold. And we bring this down dry adiabatically just to get a representative temperature of the air mass, and that gives us about 60 to 65 temperatures. So that's on the mild side. And let's try one more sounding, maybe in northwestern Colorado. That's a little closer to that trough, and that shows the bulk of the cold air is mostly around 700 to 600 millibars. Not that much of a reflection aloft above uh, 600 millibars. All right, let's see, what else do we got going on? Let's, uh, yeah, we do know that there is a dry line pushing out towards Dallas and maybe a front back there through Lubbock. Let's just take a quick sample, maybe in the dry air around Altus, Oklahoma. And we can see the cap there. That's the elevated mixed layer. That's suppressing any 
convection, well, obviously we don't have much moisture to work with, but uh, a loft, 700 millibars, yeah, some good dry air spreading eastward across the southern plains and some very steep lapse rates aloft. Further back, we catch some of the cold air advection, the cold front back there in the panhandles. And there we see what's actually more of a frontal inversion and much cooler temperatures. And let's go all the way up to Kansas. You can see that I set that cursor there in the precip field. So we've got kind of a humid layer, but it does kind of trace out the frontal inversion right there. See how the humidity kind of, the dew points kind of increase with that inversion. That's a good indication of a front. And wow, some huge bulk shears. Look at that photograph. That's wild. Looking at uh, the shear between one and six kilometers. That's like 120 knots. That's crazy. Let's see what the, the data shows here. Surface through six bulk shear vector, 102 knots. That's insane. Of course, we don't have the instability for any thunderstorms, but even if it was kind of a convective day, I would expect the towers, the initial ones, to probably be sheared apart by this kind of thing. If they could get going, you know, that would, that would be an interesting case study there. All right, let's move on. Let's look at uh, some of the satellite data. There's the current satellite picture. This is visible imagery, and it shows the very pronounced dry slot working into West Texas and Oklahoma. Now let me draw on the boundaries. That's going to be the dry line. Cold front is going to run something like that right there. And you can just assume that part up here is the warm front. And that shows the triple point is located between Russell and Concordia. So if we had a lot more moisture and we were chasing, we'd probably want to be up in this area right here. Probably some good backed winds in that region and some possibilities there for rotating storms if we had the convection and moisture. We also have some reports of blowing dust. If, you, if, I, if, if I back this up, you can see in this area here, there's kind of a hint of a dust plume. It's not much dust, but I think the bulk of it is probably there over Ardmore, just north of the Red River, and the ASOS stations down there in Dallas just catching a small piece of that. A lot of that is coming from the flat farmland around Lubbock and Amarillo. Anything else going on? Well, one notable feature is that this area of cumulus does not extend very far west. And that kind of backs up the idea of some ridging in place out in Nevada and Utah. Because a lot of this convection here is cold core. I'm not sure cold core is the right word. Uh, it's associated with very steep lapse rates in the mid-levels. And that's mostly concentrated near that trough. Not so much under the ridge where we have lapse rates that are kind of low. Okay, elsewhere across the U.S., I think we should take a quick look at the East Coast. Yeah, let's take a trip out towards the Northeast. Summer is setting in and uh, looks like a nice day out there. Don't see much going on. A little bit of alto cumulus and strata cumulus north of the warm front in New England. So a little bit of elevated lift in that region, but the front through New York and Ontario is dry. So a very hot day in that part of the Northeast. And out to the West, here comes the front. That looks like a separate baroclinic low there. It looks like it has its own dry slot going across St. Louis. And the frontal lift bands are out in this region right here. And based on that, you know, if I was going strictly off that and not, not considering that storm out to the west, that separate system out there in Kansas, I would probably assume that the fronts would look maybe something like that. So that could be a good starting setup. And you can see out there in Ohio, cumulus clouds. That kind of backs up a tropical sector out in that region ahead of the cold front. 
So what we actually have is more of a complex setup. Uh, we, you know, we do have the tropical air in place right here, but instead of a f cold front in that area, we've got something like that or like that. And yeah, there it is. You can see it's pretty well developed and it actually pulls westward towards the Kansas City area. Doesn't look like much in this area here except maybe for an outflow boundary maybe something in that region right there, because the air mass here in Ohio looks to be about the same as this air mass in Missouri. And it's just kind of broken up halfway by this convection over Illinois. And a lot of that convection does look kind of elevated in Illinois. Okay, well that's the analysis summary I suppose we can take a quick look up in Canada because we've had so much cold air coming out of that region. Let's see, 30s. It's the afternoon, and I'm going to check out Coral Harbor. I'm going to pull that up on Wikipedia. I'm going to take that 34 there. I'm also going to look at Yellowknife with that 43. And let's see if that is, let's see how close that is to seasonal normals. All right, there's, there's a, uh, Wikipedia there. Coral Harbor. Remember that was 34 degrees there. These entries are really neat because they give you a quick climatology table. So we're about the middle of the month and uh, let's see, normally they have 31 in the morning, 43 in the afternoon. So it's kind of a cold day, but it's not too unusual. Let's look at Yellowknife. What were they, 43? That's well, kind of a cool looking town. Look at that. They got high rises there. All right. Uh, let's see here. June, typically it's 65 in the afternoon. Round that up. 47 for a low. So, yeah, they're way below average. So, the current afternoon temperature is colder than the typical morning low. So we're definitely definitely got a cold air factory working up there in the Arctic. And we may have to start looking at uh, how long that's going to persist because that may modulate the weather in the U.S. the summer. All right, let's see if we can look at tropical tidbits to look at our forecast. Now drawing the fronts on, this is uh, going to be this afternoon. Yeah, you can definitely make out that front there in Kansas and Texas. And that could carry up to the north actually. So yeah, looking at this, you notice how the gradient is mostly up to the north in Canada. My analysis may actually be wrong. <laughs> So, yeah, let me redo that. Yeah, so after looking at all that data, I think I'm going to go with this. So I got kind of tripped up by that low there that it, the analysis was trying to paint. And I think, you know, there's actually a center right there and right up here. And uh, you can definitely see that wedge of warm air, 80s all the way up to Thunder Bay. And that puts the warm front up there north of the Great Lakes. So, yeah, we're going to go with that. And you can see that outflow boundary that I was talking about. Okay, going forward, let's uh, see how things look tomorrow. We advance this up. And I can see that Bear Clinic system heading from the Midwest up in Ontario. And all that cold air spills in through the Midwest. And I think that carries that front somewhat like that, moving up to the Appalachians and down into the southern U.S. And then on the other side, some return flow setting up in the high plains. Also looks like maybe another cold front coming on shore there on the west coast. Yeah, I don't know where the warm front is, maybe there. And I guess maybe the rest of it is an occluded front. 
So that's kind of the configuration. Again, this is tomorrow, Wednesday. Let's move up to Thursday. Well-developed system there, moving up into Quebec, and there's the warm front. The cold front clears much of the East Coast. Looks like that's passing New York and Boston and North Carolina. Very weak return flow setting up in Texas, and I think I can see maybe a kind of weak front in this area right here. Maybe it's a cold front or a stationary front. Anyway, yeah, right there. Uh, definitely things going downhill on the west coast right there. Let's go forward to Thursday. Or, yeah, we're on Thursday already. Let's go forward to Friday. Yeah, new system coming on shore. Yeah, there it is right there. High pressure covering much of the eastern U.S. Yeah, and looks like the center of the coldest polar air is up over Baffin Island. Let's go into Saturday. That system moves through the central Rockies up into Wyoming. And looks like uh, kind of a unsettled day there in Yellowstone Park. Anything else going on? Not really. Just high pressure in the eastern U.S. and some stormy weather out west, especially up there in the northern Rockies. And then going into Sunday, not much change. Gulf opening up just a tiny bit there. Definitely looks like summer. And I'm, I'm checking the Gulf out for any sign of tropical cyclone development. You know, there has been a, a lot of that indicated by the models. There's a lot of energy in the oceans this month, and that should carry forward through the spring. So things are probably going to be kind of active, and I'm just going to go forward through the rest of the run. There's Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Uh, looks like an easterly wave moving through Honduras, up to the north. Lots of cold air across the Pacific Northwest. Fronts, though, mostly staying in the northern plains. Looks like the Gulf opening up in the third week of June right there. So that we flow moving into Texas and becomes very summer-like. And that's it. I, I don't see any other big surprises. And you can... You can see that big Bermuda high there affecting the weather across much of the southeastern U.S. with that ridge extending all the way into the southeast U.S. Okay, that's about all I got for today. Let me get this edited and uploaded. You know the drill. So let's do that, and hopefully you guys can have a video before dinner time. All right, have a good evening. Take care, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.